I've got something a little bit different for you today because Golden FM is six years old. It's six years to the day since I created Golden FM on Twitter and then a few days later created the Golden FM YouTube channel. I can't quite believe it's that long. It's it's flown by, but at the same time, a lot has happened in my life personally and also YouTube-wise in the last six years. So I thought I'd recap the last six years, talk to you a bit about the history of Golden FM, how I've got to this point, and also think about the future because I feel like I'm only just beginning. This is the start of a journey. I'm only 26, I'm still pretty young and I still feel like there's a lot of growth here for the channel, for Golden FM as a brand, for myself. I'm only just getting started I think and I really am looking forward to the next few years. I've thoroughly enjoyed the last few years. I've come from nothing. I was pretty terrible at the start looking back at some of my first videos and I'm still not where I want to be. I still feel like I can get better. So I've put together a little timeline of the history of Golden FM, which I'll talk over, and then at the end, talk about each year in a bit more detail for those of you that are interested. But thank you for the support over the years. It really has meant so much, especially if there's any people that have been subscribed from the very start or have followed Golden FM on Twitter from the very start. You guys are legends. But even if you subscribed yesterday, even if you just, just subscribed right now, then thank you for your support. You guys are brilliant. Anyway, let's get on with this. So on the 26th of May 2012, I set up the Golden FM Twitter account so long ago. And a few days later in June, I created the YouTube channel before uploading the first ever video to my channel on the 2nd of July 2012. We had a couple of videos come out uh, during the FM 12 cycle, but there wasn't really a huge amount until FM 13, my last year of university. Uh, I created a couple of Let's Play series. In particular, my Everton Let's Play series was is probably the highlight of the era, uh, but the main highlight really was the birth of Football Manager Experiments. I created the first ever Football Manager Experiment video on YouTube. The Football Manager 2014 era was kind of a period where I took it easy on YouTube. I was back home after finishing university and I was concentrating on my love life, if I'm honest, with my future wife Jenny. Um, I did create a few videos and I did start up my second channel, which I've never really pushed on with. So that was, it was kind of a write-off that year, but I still produced plenty of content. FM15 was when I really started to take things seriously. I moved down to Southampton, had my own flat, and I was really pushing YouTube quite hard, releasing lots of content. I released a West Ham series, lots of football manager experiment videos, including starting from scratch. I took part in the FM League organised by Dr Benji, which I won. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, Football Manager 2015. And I actually had a go at Twitch for a while, streamed a few times, not masses, and I've never really gone back to it. Maybe I will one day. I reached 10,000 subscribers during that year, uh, mainly thanks to the FM League, actually. Uh, started the famous Chumps to Champs series, which was a huge amount of fun with Chumpsford City. Continued to make Football Manager experiments, started the Can San Marino win the World Cup experiment and tried it out with a few other nations as well over the next couple of years. But this year was really about getting married. I married Jenny in August 2015 and took a bit of a break over the summer, but it was really the first summer where I didn't take a break from YouTube. Uh, FM16 came out on my birthday, in fact, and I started an Arsenal Let's Play save on, on the beta, uh, created the debut challenge, which was a, a fun little Let's Play series, and then started the Golden Journeyman challenge, which unfortunately didn't really go very far. I fell out of love with that save. I know I'm zooming through this really quickly, but I will go into more detail for each slide at the end of this little timeline thing. Um, FM16 was really the year where I tried lots of different things just to see what would stick tried out various experiments including Jamie Vardy cloned, I started the score one still one series, uh, Nordic Nations dominate the world series, I released a Q&A with my wife uh, and George the Cat. That variety from FM16 certainly attracted a lot of new subscribers ahead of FM17 which was a, a massive year for me because I started Regen Rovers which was the series I'm most proud of and I'll talk about that in more, in more detail at the end of this video. But it really was the major point for FM17. I didn't really do much else. I think I made one experiment. I did release a West Ham series called Creating a Legacy. But it was all about Regen Rovers FM17. And there was a lot of love for it. And I really do appreciate all the support on that series. 
Uh, it got to 140 episodes and then I moved house. So that was a huge moment for me in my life personally. And I had a big break over the summer, which was detrimental, I must say, to the channel. Of course it is. When you take a few months out, it does have an impact. So FM18, I was, so far, I've been trying to play catch up. It helped by releasing a couple of videos at the start of FM18, which did very well, in particular a tactics video. I did a school one, still one series. Once again, I managed Napoli. I had recently done two smaller series involving Portimonensi and, of course, Hearts, most recently. Um, but I did create quite a few experiments over the Christmas and winter period as well, which did particularly well. One in particular I really enjoyed was um, the transfer embargo experiment that I did. But of course, this year really is all about one video in particular. Uh, it's an experiment where I simulated the World Cup 100 times, and it's already my most viewed and liked video on the channel ever, and it's only two months old, and, and that has spawned a few other World Cup videos since then as well. So like I said, I'm going to talk you through these slides individually just to let you know a bit more background information about the channel and my life as well and how I got to this point. So we'll go back six years to the start, to 2012, but in fact I'm going to go further back and tell you about my history of playing the game. Because the first ever game I played was Championship Manager 3 around my friend's house in year 5 at school. So it's a long time ago, I was only well 10 years old I suppose, and that was the first game I fell in love with. I then bought... CM9900, my dad bought it for me in fact, and that was the first game I owned. I then had the 0102 demo disc, which came in like a box of Cheerios or something like, like that. Anyone else get that in a box of Cheerios or Shreddies? That was a great marketing campaign, I must say. And then the first football manager that came out was 05, and that I actually bought that. I bought that myself, the first game that I bought with my own money at the age of 13, I guess. And I loved it. I played it for a few years and at that age I didn't have much money and my parents wouldn't buy it for me every year. So I bought FM05, I bought FM08 in my GCSE year, which looking back probably was a bit of a mistake, although it didn't actually have an effect on me. I was, I've, I've gone through phases of being addicted to Football Manager, but I know how to control that addiction, I guess, unlike some people who would just completely be obsessed with it and can't rip themselves away from the game. But I'm able to do that. I've been lucky in that sense. Uh, but then after that, after playing FM08 for a few years, I didn't buy another game until FM11 in my first year of university. I bought the game every single year since then because of YouTube, of course. But FM11 was the sort of the game that kind of inspired me, really, uh, along with, in particular, FM12, which is why I started Golden FM. Now, myself and my friend Tom, my best friend Tom, we had a little private Facebook group, which is a bit weird, I know. And it was called Golden FM's Facebook group. And it was called Golden FM because my last name Holden and his name, his last name Greenwood, we attached his G to my Holden, Holden, <laughs> took the H off my name and created Golden. It's very sad, I know, but that's how Golden FM was formed. And I set up the Twitter account when I was really bored in the University of Southampton Library in my second year of university. Coming to the end, I was doing some revision. I was doing one last assignment, I think, before the summer. I was so bored. I just set it up randomly, really. I just thought, I want to share my football manager achievements with the world. Perhaps give advice, try and help people. I thought I was quite good at the game, although I'm not sure I am. <laughs> uh, looking back, I, I thought I was quite good. And myself and my friend Tom, over the next few weeks, grew the Twitter account over that summer to like over 10,000 followers. I got in touch with a few of those big football Twitter accounts back then, like Get Football News, who shared the account significantly and got lots of followers and I thought I can build on this I want to, I want to create content I want to do something I'd seen some YouTube videos I'd seen some blogs I'd seen there was lots of people creating stuff even back then and on the forums as well and all the forums so I thought why not make some videos so I set up the YouTube channel Tom wasn't interested in that he didn't really want to make videos uh, but we did do some podcasts as you can see here summer 2012 we created I think four podcasts together Three of them were uploaded to Podomatic. It was long before all these other Football Manager podcasts that have been born in the last few years. There's loads of them now, but we, we attempted it back then, kind of based on the real Football Manager podcast that was a thing done by Miles Jacobson, although it wasn't really Football Manager themed, which is why we wanted to do an actual Football Manager themed podcast. We had quite a few followers on Twitter by this point, so we thought people would listen Got a few listens, not not amazing, but maybe we should have kept that going. 
But Tom was really busy with his last year of university training to be a teacher. And then the year after that, in his first year of being a teacher. So he kind of went off the scene. He helped me with Twitter for a year or two, very sporadically. Um, and then I kind of took control of the whole thing. And it's become my my little business, I guess, in, in a way. So that was 2012. So it started my second year of university. But... 2013 was where things really kicked on especially with YouTube because I, I released my first couple of Let's Play series the first was with a random team in Singapore Haugan United <laughs> looking back at my early videos they were poor the audio quality was poor and even when I got this microphone in FM14 the audio quality I just didn't it took me ages to get it right it took me ages to do YouTube properly essentially but the these little videos I made, you know, they, I built on it. It took me a long time to get there. But back then, audio quality wasn't quite as big a thing. Now it's imperative. You need really a good, really good, clear audio to, to get anywhere, I think. But back then, it wasn't necessarily that important. Um, I, I managed to reach 1,000 subscribers in, in December. So it took me six months to get to 1,000 subscribers. So anyone creating content out there, and I had a, a bit of a boost, really, because I had lots of Twitter followers and I was able to get probably 100 of them over before I even uploaded a video. Uh, so I had a little bit of help there. So don't worry if you're a new creator. <laughs> don't worry about this because it takes time. I think it's, it's easier now because there's a lot... Football Manager co content on YouTube is a thing. It's a thing that people watch. Back then, no one really watched it. And I did get a few comments thinking, you're sad. You're weird. Why are you making Football Manager videos on YouTube? It's all about FIFA at the moment, you know. Um, but I, I wanted... To, I did, football Manager was my passion and that's why I continued. And I uploaded the first ever Football Manager experiment to YouTube on the 10th of February 2013. And uh, yeah, it's definitely the first ever one. I know people have done experiment type things. They didn't call them Football Manager experiments. But on the forum, there was things that people would do with the editor. But I, I gave birth to the football manager experiment thing on YouTube and the term football manager experiment, which I'm quite proud of, really, because everyone calls them football manager experiments now. And I know some people hate them and it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm pretty proud of the fact that I started that. And I've always tried to be as innovative as possible with them and not do generic, boring stuff like I, I've done the odd player at X team, but my ones generally are quite different, like flipping the leagues round, giving the top six teams a transfer embargo. Can Egypt win the World Cup and increasing their, their youth ability and that sort of thing? Um, I also started an emulating series, which is where I created subscribers on the editor as players and we holiday into the future. And I've done quite a few of them. We've done emulating Messi, emulating Ronaldo, emula emulating Pele. We've also done manager ones with emulating Sir Alex Ferguson, emulating Jack Young later on, of course, uh, the Regen Rovers themed one. So at the end of my third year of university, my last year of university, I went back home to Chelmsford for a year. I started going out with Jenny, my future wife, but I went back home for a year. I started working for Tom's dad, in fact, and I'm still working for him to this day. That's what I do. I work from home doing data analysis stuff. We're a data analysis company of sales data, essentially, from shops. Um, so that's what I do day to day. YouTube isn't my career. I'm, I'm regularly asked it, but it, it really isn't. I don't earn enough money from it to do that. Maybe one day I can. I've never completely dedicated myself to it. And that's been the issue. I've taken breaks. For example, summer of 2013, I took a break. I didn't really release too much content until FM14. And FM14 is the year that I, I didn't really push on. I had that potential to, to push on much more than I did and in fact it was kind of work the space that came into the scene at this point and really became a, a, a great quality football manager creator and went on to be the biggest ever creator in terms of subscribers to a solely FM dedicated YouTube channel and I just took a back seat I was trying to, like I said I was <laughs> concentrated on my love life I was going backwards and forwards between Chelmsford and Southampton, where Jenny was still at university. I was in my first year of a job outside of university, uh, outside uh, after university, and trying to really push on with that and, and work hard. And I was driving around a lot of the southeast of England at that point on a particular project that we had. So I didn't have masses of time for FM14. And recording at home with my parents there was it was a little bit awkward. I found 
I bought this microphone though, it's still with me. It's a great microphone, the Yeti. But I did do a few series, I did another emulating series. I continued to create Football Manager content, but I never really got into a Let's Play series. That, yeah, there's nothing that grabbed my attention. There wasn't anything that I got addicted to. But I started a few other things, like I started Legends Reborn before the 2014 World Cup. And I actually focused on other channels during the, the World Cup, strangely enough. I had my second channel, I uploaded a video there that blew up, did really well. It was the commentary of James Rodriguez's amazing goal at the World Cup, and it was the Colombian commentary. I just uploaded that audio footage and it got over a million views. And it was funny really, because that one video got more views than my entire Golden FM channel at that point. And I actually uploaded a couple other World Cup videos to other channels that got, what well, one, it got over two million views. So yeah, that was my other YouTube secret side of things i was trying to just sort of upload football stuff really to see if it if it would explode and it did during that world cup it's never done i've never done that since then <laughs> i went back to golden fm for fm 15 really and this was the year i really pushed on after a long break over the summer i didn't release anything between the world cup and fm 15 and that's my problem I, my subscriber base would increase and then it would stagnate and the views would stagnate because i would just go through these phases of having breaks and that was obviously a problem when it comes to YouTube. If you, if you take big breaks, you need to be consistent. And I've, I've tried to be as consistent as possible, but there have been times when I haven't. And that's why it's not become a career for me, I guess. I've not really focused on it as much as I could have done. I've focused on other things. I'm still only 26 though. So there is time to, to, to perhaps make it a bigger thing for me at some point. But FM15 was really the year I pushed on. I've become a Sports Interactive approved fan site, which um, isn't a thing anymore, but when it was, I, I, I'm really happy to, to become linked with Sports Interactive at that time. Although it's never really, never really benefited me, to be honest. Um, I started a West Ham series. I started starting from scratch experiments, which is where I removed all the players from, from teams and just continued into the future to see what would happen. That was quite a bit of fun. I took part in Dr. Benji's FM League, which was a huge amount of fun, getting to know a few other creators. I worked the space, took part. Dr. Benji, of course. And Mick Marr Jr., the legend. I beat him in the final, which was an, an incredible game. <laughs> if you can go back to my old videos, may, maybe go and watch that video. In fact, if you go to Mick's channel, if you, if you know Mick, it's one of his last ever videos before he kind of retired from um, YouTube. And this was the first experiment that really, really caught the imagination of everyone. There was a few that got lots of views before, but... And I'd already released two versions of this experiment, but when I flipped the English leagues this time around, it really did get a lot of attention, got more views, people absolutely loved it. And of course, I've done it a couple more times since then as well. I've got two slides for FM15, I might even have three, because it was a, I think it was only two. It was a, it was a big year, FM15 for me. I actually tried to stream on Twitch, long before a lot of other people. I, I even actually streamed back on FM12, whilst I was uploading my first videos and Twitch was real that was like really new back then and I tried it and I did my my laptop didn't really like it to be honest and that's that's the problem there but I did stream in the early part of 2015 a few times and I've not streamed since and I'm a bit sad about that but my life doesn't quite fit to streaming at the moment maybe one day it will I reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube in March 2015. I started something called Plogs with Golden FM, just sort of real life thing. Vlogs, but Paul, so I called them Plogs. Yeah, a bit odd, I know. I've, tr I've tried various things. FM15, I really did try a lot of different things. Started Chumps to Champs, which was one of my favorite ever series. A lot of people really enjoyed that, sort of the hardcore bunch that, that was subscribed to me really enjoyed that series. I took Champs to City all the way to the Premier League and then the last episode was actually the day before FM16 came out, strangely enough. And I also started a Championship Manager 0102 season. I did one season with with Leeds United. And the, I think like the third episode was shared on the 442 website in an article, which has got quite a lot of traction over the last three years. Uh, so that's, I think like the first two or three episodes have 50,000 views, um, which I'm pretty happy with really. So moving on, it's still the FM15 cycle actually. Uh, this is when I first started the Can Country X Win the World Cup experiments. First of all, San Marino. I've done it with various other countries like North Korea versus South Korea, USA versus Russia. 
most recently I did Egypt of course and so that was when that series first began almost three years ago now but the, I suppose the biggest moment in my well this obviously is the biggest moment in my life in August 2015 I got married which was incredible of course and Despite that, I only really took a break during this summer for my honeymoon because Chumps to Champs series was a massive thing and I continued it throughout. Apart from those two weeks, I went away for the honeymoon. So this was the first summer I didn't take a break from YouTube and it, it definitely helped. It helped me push on. Chumps to Champs just took me nicely through to FM16, kept my subscriber count chugging along and the views as well and kept my channel relevant for that summer because the summer is a difficult time to keep football manager content relevant now i set up a website which doesn't exist anymore and uh the 27th of october like i said was the last episode of chumps to champs uh, and then the next day my birthday my 24th birthday i released episode one of my arsenal fm16 series because that's when the game went live. FM16 was another year where I didn't really get gripped by a particular series and that's been my my problem I think. I've only really had Chumps to Champs and Regen Rovers go the distance. A lot of other people, a lot of other YouTubers have had really long-term saves that have gone the distance and I've never been one for that. I've done, most of my series have been quite short ones. However, Regen Rovers was special, Chumps to Champs was special and I want more of that. FM19, Regen Rovers will be back exclusive no it's not an exclusive i've already said it quite a few times <laughs> uh, the golden jenny man challenge i thought was going to be a long-term save but i just couldn't get into it i just oh, I, there was something about it i just couldn't get into it and i don't think journeyman uh, chat a series of the, uh, for me i'm kind of a one club man i think for saves on the whole um i did set up um, an interesting series this year where you guys sent in goal, goal of the month to me though, and that was quite a lot of fun. But like I said, I tried out lots of little series during FM16. Bayern Munich was a short series where George the Cat featured for the first time. Jamie Vardy cloned, which was a, a fun experiment. My first ever score and still one, which was inspired by the YouTuber Carl Plays FM, who no longer makes videos, but he did a series called Win One Take One, which a few other guys tried, but I took it to the next level and, and called it score one still one. It was insane. The, those of you that have watched those three series or one of those three series, it's just ridiculous. To be honest, it doesn't really work. And lastly, at the end of the FM16 cycle, I did do a Q&A with my darling wife, Jennifer, and George the Cat too, which was... I can't believe that's two years ago. That is crazy. It really is. Uh, but FM17 came around, which doesn't seem that long ago, but October 2016, that's, that's a year and a half, over a year and a half ago now. And this video that I released at the start of the FM17 cycle was actually my most viewed video until very recently. It's got over 200,000 views. Just me talking about the release video um, that Football Manager put up on their channel. So just like a teaser video of the 3D match engine, I think. And, and it got lots of views. Um, I started a Liverpool beta save, but it crashed. It died after like episode eight or something, which I was really enjoying, actually. I'd signed some good players and was having a lot of fun, but the game crashed and I lost the save and I hadn't backed it up because I'm an idiot. But I think it was meant to be. I think it was a blessing in disguise because it made me start Regen Rovers early. And obviously, those of you that have been around since Regen Rovers know what that became. Uh, my best ever series, the series I'm most proud of. But if it, the Liverpool series hadn't crashed and Regen Rovers could have been very different, it might not have actually happened because I was contemplating between two different ideas. But I went for Regen Rovers and I'm bloody pleased I did because it was amazing. Episode 8, if, if you want to watch one episode of any of my Let's Play series and you've not seen them before, watch episode 8 of Regen Rovers because it was insane. What a, what a survival story. I know this video is really long, by the way, and rambly. I apologise if, if you don't like long videos, but I just want to tell you about Golden FM, the history of Golden FM. I know it's a bit strange doing a six-year anniversary. It makes more sense to do five years, I know, but I kind of forgot. And six years is a big number for YouTube, so hopefully you're still here watching. Region Rovers, I love it. And I will be doing it on FM19, and I'll be releasing a video at, hmm, sometime in July, the first video, not of Region Rovers, of course, but just asking for your advice and suggestions for the series. So keep your eyes out in July for that first video. Uh, I've, I've, it hit 140 episodes in the end, which was incredible, but it slowed down. It slowed down towards the end. 
I hope that doesn't happen next time. But it was mainly because of our house situation. We'd been renting since we got married. And a couple of different places. I'd, I'd moved out the flat and into a new house by this point. But we wanted to buy a house. And 2017 was quite... Uh, those of you that have bought a house know that it can be difficult. It can be quite tumultuous. Is that the word? I think that's I think that's the word. Tumult. We're going with it anyway. Tumultuous. I, the more I think about it, I don't think that is a word. It must be a word. If not, I've invented it. Basically, it means it's a bit chaotic. <laughs> but we managed to finally buy the house in August 2017. And the couple months before, I just couldn't think about anything else. I was, I was a little bit... I was quite anxious to be honest about it going through finally and, and everything uh, so I just couldn't concentrate on YouTube I needed to take a break and I took a big break over that summer because of the house move and setting everything up and moving everything and that's what had that's what killed Regent Rovers at the end fortunately it did have a nice sort a sort of nice ending we did lose a cup final in the last episode but we were in the Premier League and, and that was kind of a, a nice ending that's how I wanted to end it in the Premier League for FM18 FM18. I was kind of playing catch up because of that big break. I didn't upload a video for basically four months. That's a long time on YouTube. It's my biggest break since FM14, the summer of FM14, where I didn't release anything for a long time. So perhaps my relevance had died down a bit. There was a lot of people that had really become big that year, like Loki Doki, Luluju, lots of streamers. We stream FM. That had all been created kind of in that year. And I, I'd kind of just taken a back seat I suppose during that summer because I didn't release anything but I came back onto the scene with my Napoli series which did quite well I also released a tactics video which did very well over 100,000 views at the moment and that kind of got me some attention back started to score on still one series I was invited to sports interactive headquarters to, to take part in the creators cup with seven other creators Dr Benji, Work the Space, Loki Doke, Lelujo etc and that was a lot of fun that weekend and we created some good videos. Unfortunately, I didn't win, but it was fun. That's the main thing. And I started making experiments again for the first time since FM16, because I didn't really do them on FM17. And that got me a lot of tension, because experiments do. There was quite a few people that started doing experiments in the last year as well, like Jen Caldo. Loki Doki was doing experiments. Tom FM most recently. All great guys, but they started doing experiments. So I had a bit of competition there, which was, which was great. But we're trying to... I, I wanted to try and... Give myself a USP, unique selling point, by always trying to create innovative experiments. Something that just grabs you. Something that is different, not just generic stuff. So that's why I've always created different things. Like the transfer embargo experiment, top six transfer embargo experiment. I was, that was one of my favourite ever experiments I've done. It, I found it fascinating. It really was very interesting. So I'd recommend going to watch that. The Brian Brothers quadru quadruplets experiment as well. That was a lot of fun. Uh, most recently, of course, we've had the Paul Plays in Portugal series and the Hearts of Gold series, which have been just sort of smaller background series, I guess, uh, on a every other day basis. There's been a few of you interested, not masses of you interested compared to Region Rovers, of course, but it's kept me ticking along until I released this video two months ago where I simulated the World Cup 100 times. It's been shared around the world by various sports outlets. I think like ESPN in a random country, I can't remember which one, it was like um, a Brazilian sports website shared it. It's been shared in Germany. It's been shared by an Irish sports website. Various websites have shared it. So it's got over 200,000 views, which is my most viewed channel, uh, most viewed video on my channel, which is crazy. Um, I will be releasing a 1,000 <laughs> simulated video soon, uh, thanks to the help of you guys, because I've already done the 500, thanks to you guys sending in simulations. But 1,000 will be released hopefully in the next week or so before the World Cup starts. So as of now, I've got over 38,000 subscribers, over 22,000 followers on Twitter. And that's quite two different audiences. There's not a huge amount of crossover, I don't think, between those two. I know there's a lot of you that follow me on Twitter, but there's also a lot of people on Twitter that aren't subscribed to YouTube and vice versa. And I've released over 1,225 videos which is a lot, but kind of highlights the fact that perhaps I've not been 100% dedicated to YouTube because 
I mean, that, that is a lot of videos, but there's there's people, for example, like Loki Doki and Luluju that have basically released that many videos in the last two years. And I've been doing this for six years. So it shows I've taken breaks. It shows I've concentrated on other aspects of my life. I've had to. Um, I, if I'd decided to try and make YouTube my career, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to buy a house, for example. But it's not to say that in the future that I can't make this a bigger thing. And I hope Regen Rovers can take me to the next level. I think that is my USP. And I hope there's a lot of people that will be interested in it on FM19. A lot of hopes there. But that's all you can do. You, you have to have dreams, don't you? So that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dream big for FM19 with Regen Rovers. Try and take it to the next level. My one fear is that everyone will compare it to the first series and people might not like it as much. The first series was quite raw. I want the next series to still have that rawness, but be a bit more professional as well. But there's a lot of people that have followed me on Twitter or subscribed to me on YouTube in the last year or so that won't know Region Rovers, that won't have watched Region Rovers. So I hope there's going to be a new audience to it as well as the old audience enjoying it. But all we can, all we can do is wait and see really. Um, but that's the future. That's what I hope the future is going to be. I hope we can take it to the next level. And I hope you're going to be there with me.